Welcome back, party people. You are listening to Crossplay, where we get together each and every week and talk about all the video game goodness we can handle right here on the whatnots.com. It's Sunday, February 9th, 2020, and this is episode 14. Uh, and coming up on today's show, co-founder of Rockstar Games, Dan Hauser, has left the company in Microsoft News. Phil Spencer says that Sony and Nintendo are not the competition, and Warcraft 3 Reforged is apparently a giant mess. So <laughs> we will get to all of that in a sec. My name is Kyle, and I am joined on the opposite microphone by Ignacio. How are you, Ignacio? Yo, what up? How's what going? has been going on in your life? Uh, everything good, everything normal, classes and all. Yeah? You know, right here in San Francisco. Are you starting to right now, like them a little bit more? What? Are you starting to like your classes a little bit more? Uh, I mean, it's your regular engineering classes. So, gotcha. Yeah. Now, I, you've probably told me this before. Is this, mm -hmm. what year of school is this for you? Okay, technically it's my f fourth year. Okay. So, why I say technically is because it's usually you go freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior and all. Right. But my career has six and a half years, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so, so you still have yeah, a little bit fourth. more of school left yeah. after this. Yeah, I have. Gotcha. Still have some. I did my, well... I was going to say I did my four years and then got out, but I ended up taking a year off of school because I mm. was poor and I ran out of m m m money no. uh, and eventually went back that next year after I had saved up. But I did my kind of four years and then left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so that was good. My uh, counselor was like, you know, kudos to you. Not many people who t take a whole year off like that come yeah. back and then finish. I was like, oh, well, I, I mean, this is what I wanted to do, so I did the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I just got back from going to go see Birds of Prey. Yeah. And? That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, it's, for uh, sure, it's it's fun. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like a X Men First Class to me. Uh, uh, there's some 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 things that's like, okay, well, that's not really who some of these characters are exactly. Yeah. But I like what they did with all of the stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I I I thought the fight scenes were incredible. The characters were fantastic. Uh, and yeah, it was just. A lot of fun from start to <laughs> from start to finish. Yeah, for sure, it, it was fun. I saw it when it came out last Thursday. Mm -hmm. I don't seem to to be as high as some other people are on the movie, but I I did enjoy it. I mean, it, gotcha. it wasn't like Marvel, like what they usually put out. How good mm -hmm. they are! It's more like good DC. Let's, yeah, let's call it good DC. Like I, but yeah, for. For sure, it's better than Suicide Squad, so... I'd probably sounds... put this around... Well, I, I, I feel like say, saying this is on par with the Ant-Man films is, no. is, 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 is like... No. Is saying it's not all that, all that good. I, I enjoyed what? the Ant-Man films. You don't enjoy it? What? I, did, I thought they were great. They're not oh. the best ones, but they're good. Oh, I thought you were saying you didn't enjoy them much. No, 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 no. I, 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 I liked the Ant Man films, um, but I, I think this is better than that. Mm. I, I, I think this is maybe. I, I think personally, I would put it like right under Iron Man One, kind of around there. Mm. If that makes sense, yeah. but it's like. Uh. Iron Man 1 was also, like, more than 10 years ago, so it's just like, come on, yeah. DC, <laughs> you can do this <laughs> one of these days. Yeah, I don't know. I, I wouldn't go as far as comparing them to Ant-Man or Iron Man. I for sure think those are much better movies. Oh, yeah. But if I compare them for against uh, other DC movies, I think 
out of the good DC movies, which I would say those are Aquaman, Wonder Woman, and Shazam, mm-hmm. it would be on the lower end of the good DC movies, but it's for sure better than the other DC movies they put out. Your okay. Justice Leagues, Justice Leagues, and Batman vs Superman, and all. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. I think uh, Melissa and myself were going to be doing an episode of the reactor core uh giving all of our like spoiler filled thoughts on all of that i think we're gonna be recording it like tuesday or wednesday night Mm. like that so be on the lookout for that stuff down Mm -hmm. down the road Mm -hmm. uh well let's get back into it ignacia what have you been playing this week (laughs) Pretty much the same as last week. I'm still going through Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. That game, it's a long game, which I wasn't mm-hmm. expecting that much, but still I'm enjoying every second of it. My thoughts are exactly okay. the same as last time. I really love the game. I really love the amount of love Cyber Connect 2 put into the game. And I want to again give a shout out to the localization team for the Latin American localization Oh, they because I'm. They finally got who won out. What? I I th- I thought I remember you saying that it didn't have that at first. No, I mean what it doesn't have is uh the voices. Oh, it only has okay. the English and the Japanese voices. Gotcha. But if you have your PS4 set to Spanish or at least Latin American Spanish, the subtitles will be in. In Spanish, of course. And I just want to give a shout out to the localization team for Latin America because those, that translation for the subtitles has the same amount of quality as you would find in the, in the actual dub for the show for Latin America. Nice. I was even impressed because some scenes aren't translated as directly from the Japanese, but they are translated the same exact way as they did it for the show. They would use the exact same words, and that really surprised me. Interesting. So what yeah. what are those words specifically? Like there, there's, it, it's like, like you said, it seems like there's some kind of discrepancy from what it would be if it was based off the J- Japanese, but they've kind of taken their own thing. I mean, the Latin American dub by itself, it was pretty much one, one-to-one one with the Japanese version. Okay. Was pre- if you compare the translations. But sometimes, yeah, the Latin American dub would do or say stuff in a different way that would still make sense on it. And sometimes it would be even better than the original. So one thing I, l- I like to do is go into YouTube and rewatch some specific scenes. Mm-hmm. Some memorable scenes from the show. So playing through them on the on the game, I've been seeing how they use the exact same wording as they use for the show, which wouldn't be the same translation as if you would do it blindly just through the game. That's really cool. That's one thing. That, yeah, it's really cool. So oh. shout out to the localization team for the Latin American version. Even yeah. though it doesn't have the the voices, it's, I'm glad to see at least the subtitles get the same love you see from the original dub team. That's sweet. How yeah. do you feel about dubbed anime or, or like the the whole like sub versus d- d- dub thing? Because you're like I I here I I am in America where mm-hmm. it's that's. Per- pretty much the kind of binary options you have there it's like you get the yeah. original J- japanese with the subtitles or you get the english d- 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 dub what like but you're you're looking for stuff in spanish or ing 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 so you no, have another option I mean, there what's what's yeah what's your thoughts i mean usually if i i mean usually if you look at newer stuff newer japanese content mm-hmm. you 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 have the the options of Japanese or English. And usually, mm-hmm. if I get the those two options, I would go for the Japanese. Just sure. because I don't trust the English localization. I've been... I've had some examples from where I, I really don't like the job they do translating the Japanese. Sure. So, if 
given those two options, I would go for the Japanese version. But if I go back into anime I grew up with, it might be not nostalgia, but I would usually go for the Latin American dub because I know that at least back then they would put a lot of work and effort into the, the dub. Usually, if you compare the original to the Latin American dub, mm -hmm. they usually do a one-to-one -one work. They would, you compare what they say in Spanish to the translation into Japanese, you would see it's pretty much exactly the same. Yeah. And that I really love. Of course, you would have to change some stuff here and there just because it, it would make sense doing it one-to-one. -one. But usually, at least the work back back in the day for the, the Latin American localization, it was pretty much one-to-one. -one. Okay. So Interesting. Yeah, if I, if I went back to anime from, say, the 90s, I would choose the Latin American dub because I know it would be a great work of, of dubbing and... Also, I wouldn't have to read subtitles, so that would be great. Have you noticed if there's, like, certain companies that do better? Like, if this is, like, hey, it's Funimation, or this is <laughs> Sunrise, or whoever. Um, uh, is is there some that do better than uh, uh, mm. others? Have, have you noticed that? Uh, I, the only ones I know I can... Compare for sure are from back in the day. The ones that come to my mind are Four Kids and Funimation. Okay. For the Funimation part, I have the Dragon Ball C dub to compare to. So, and I really don't like the job they did for the English English translation for the Dragon Ball. Mm -hmm. So, on that part, I wouldn't trust Funimation on on a dub. And then the only other one I have to compare is Four Kids, which doesn't exist anymore, but at least back in the day, mm -hmm. we actually, I don't know why, if you go back in, back in the day to shows that Four Kids would translate in English, for whatever reason, we got translations of the Four Kids translation in English. Like, say, for, exa say for example, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Right. We didn't get the translation directly from the Japanese. We got the translation directly from the 4Kids version. Or huh. Pokemon was just like that. And maybe it's That's a bit of, bit of a bias since I grew up with it. Is that I I know the 4Kids did some th some changes, but I, I'm okay with those. I mean, it, it doesn't bother me that much. Maybe it's because I grew up with it. But it didn't yeah. bother me much. And for oh. that reason, I can actually watch Pokemon in English and and also enjoy it because it's more or less what I grew up with. I, but I, okay. but no ahead. more than stuff I don't... Is that I don't watch much new, Jap new anime, so I don't have much to compare for right now gotcha. for current stuff. Okay. I only watch I, my Dragon Ball Super and my Digimons try. And Hell those yeah. I do in, English, in Japanese, so. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I think I tend to go on a more case-by-case -case basis. I, like, I, mm -hmm. I, I tend to stay away from a lot of, like, mainstream anime, or at least ones that, like, make it super popular. And then I, t I tend to, like, go hunt down something that's maybe a little more according to my tastes uh, and, and stuff like that. But then it just depends on, like, if this if I ended up liking the show, then maybe I'll check out both versions, and then it's like, okay, well, this one's not that bad. Or sometimes mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, watch the Japanese on that one. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh well. Are you Good. planning on watching your name in English or in Japanese? Uh, probably in Japanese. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that one I'll go with the Japanese since that won a bunch of awards and stuff. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I've heard they did a good job for the English dub, but still, I would rather watch it in Japanese. Yeah, I, 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 I think something like that. There's a certain mm -hmm. caliber that you have, you like, have to kind of assume. It might not be safe to assume, but still, it just like 
I think they knew they ha- ha- had a hit on their mm-hmm. hands that I, I think they would put enough of the work into the English dub mm-hmm. and the a- 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 acting be- be- behind that. But who knows? Yeah. Um, who knows? Ignacio is referring to our next episode of the review show. Uh, in which, Ignacio, you are going to be joining us for that one. And we're yep. going to be watching your name. We're going to be recording that on the 16th, I believe, if that's correct. Yes, next yes, Sunday. next week. Um, yep. So that should be out around uh, Wednesday the 19th. Yeah, on the lookout your name is a great movie, so I recommend you watch it and tune in for the review. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. Anything else you wanted to share about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot? No, pretty much. My thoughts now are pretty much the same thoughts that thoughts I had last week. Okay, Fair I enough. really love it. It may be not, it might not be a perfect game, but it is a perfect Dragon Ball Z game at least, and I love it because of that. Fair I was enough. a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. I, 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 I think I'm kind of the same because i've i've been playing the same things as last week too it's just more assassin's creed mm-hmm. a- 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 odyssey and more life is strange uh but i think for odyssey my thoughts are pr- pretty much the same i the one the one thing i would say is that like i'm like 23 24 a- hours in and the story just really isn't doing it for me yet oh, um, oh yet y- yeah yet I mean I I know the game is really long so maybe by the a- 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 end of it I'll look back and be like that was actually a really good story um, mm. but that being said I yeah the gameplay loop is still the the Assassin's Creed stuff that I know it's still a little bit more RPG stuff for my tastes yeah. but um, it's so good, and I'm, I'm still I'm still re- really enjoying it. I just met Socrates, um, <laughs> so I, I did some things that was like I'm I'm gonna like free this person and like change the voting on this one thing. So I rigged in election, um, all, all, all of that stuff. I don't know why I was doing it. That was just like do the thing, and I was like, okay, I did the thing. Hmm. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out yeah i soon. think i got to socrates last time i played okay i think good stuff good stuff yeah. um looks like you're also continuing on vader immortal yeah so like i said last week i bought an oculus quest mm-hmm. it's been pretty hard to find lately but luckily amazon had it so oculus has been having this Actually, I don't know if it still has it, but this promotion that if you bought an Oculus Quest between certain dates, you would actually get the get the Vader Immortal trilogy of episodes. Right. So last week I talked about Immortal Episode 1, and this week I got to play Vader Immortal Episode 2. Okay. How was that uh, one? So I like to divide this game into two parts. There's the dojo part and the story part. Mm-hmm. The story part, it wasn't as interesting as episode one. I don't think you did much of interest. I okay. did like going through through all the caves and whatever you go through, especially because it's... As it is in VR, it feels like you are in some other place and it's awesome to look around you and look at giant structures or whatever. Yeah. But I don't think it did much on story. It was more of you going through a part to try to get some to some place. And then when it got interesting, the episode just ends. So, comparing it to episode one, I think episode one was more interesting, story-wise. Sure. But the improvement that episode two does over episode one is that they in- it introduces force powers. Ooh. So, you mostly use the force through the story instead of using a 
lightsaber. You do eventually get it, but it's mostly you using force. Mm -hmm. But it does make the dojo better, I think. Okay. So what I'm enjoying... More stuff to play around with. Yeah, so what I'm enjoying more out of these episodes are the dojos, as it makes you feel the most awesome and the most as a Jedi. And so the dojo on episode two is pretty much pretty much similar to episode one, but it as it introduces the force, you have more powers to use. So you actually, as you have the force, you can grab stuff, you can grab enemies and kill them like that and pull them to you and towards enemies, and that's mm -hmm. fun. You can interact with the environment. So say activate some traps and whatever. But what I really love the most is that since you have the force now, you can actually throw your lightsaber. Oh, and cool. that's that's feels that feels really cool. That's you can, awesome. Yeah. And it reminded me the most of out of uh how Captain America throws his throws his shield. Oh yeah. The the action of throwing your lightsaber felt pretty much just like that. You would see an enemy on the far and you would toss your lightsaber at him, at him and try to move your arm such in a, such a way that when it comes back it hits another enemy and that feeling of throwing your lightsaber feels really cool and it, and because of it I would really love to see a VR game for the Avengers as I say said it feels really really pretty much as Captain America throwing his shield so how does that feel I, like I, so I've I've never done anything in vr so I, mm -hmm. I, I i don't know if i would get motion sick or who knows what but <laughs> how like how does that feel because i like my only awesome. point of reference for that would be the leviathan axe in god of war just like yeah. that that felt so good to just it feels throw. just like that i would say oh man yeah that's sweet yeah, it it really feels like I said. Imagine yourself being Captain America throwing his shield. It's just like that. Yeah. How much control do you have of it once you throw it? Uh. Once you throw it, once you throw it, you don't have much control over it. I mean, you have if you move your hand to say behind an enemy, you would force it to go where your hand is and actually hit another enemy okay but once you throw it that that is pretty much all the control you have so it but it just really goes in a small loop mm, mm, or is it like I mean, straight out and then no i mean what i really like the the great job they did is that if you think uh, uh, how do we put this? If you say you see an enemy mm -hmm. and you throw your lightsaber at it, at that enemy, you can for sure you have a guarantee that it would go as you would expect it to go, as you would hope it would fly towards okay. the enemy. And I think it has a really good tracking of the enemy. Gotcha. So it kind of locks on. And then sell them. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, it locks. It locks at your enemy, but it. It's not like if you had a, a lock on system. It feels mm -hmm. like you actually did it, in a way that it would hit that enemy. That's sweet. Yeah, and you know if you have an enemy going, behind cover, if you toss it over your shoulder, that would probably get him. But if you go towards the side or down up, it would probably not hit him. So it is, it works really well according to how you move your arm. Interesting. Yeah. Video games are cool, man. Yeah, video games are cool on VR, especially. It's really cool. That's so awesome. Yeah. I, 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 I love my all. Oculus Quest, it's great. One of these days, I'll try out some yeah. VR something. 
one day. Yeah. Who knows? And especially with the Oculus Quest, it's really great how you can just pick it up. Mm-hmm. You can be whatever you are and you can actually set boundaries. You can draw on the floor your boundaries with yeah. the helmet and you can pretty much use it wherever you are without having to move anything. That's cool. Yeah. I uh, just downloaded Firewall Zero Hour. I think that's the one. The one that was yeah. free on PlayStation Plus mm-hmm. this month. So yeah. maybe one day if I end up having a PlayStation VR down the road, I'll at least have yeah. something. Yeah, play. Firewall is a really cool game. I really recommend it. Cool. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Life is strange. Is what I've through. also been playing this week. Uh, my partner and I finished it up. We oh. finished up the last two episodes of the first Life is Strange. Uh, and man, I, it just it's it's a good reminder of how much I love that game. It is so good. Yeah. It's it's so much fun. And it, this was my like I don't know fourth time playing it maybe. Um, but it was my partner's first time and where we stopped last time was at the end of episode three and she was just like this is really good but i have no idea what's happening or what's going to happen and 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 she was just like like usually i can kind of tell like the story is going in one direction but i have no idea where this is going uh, and so I'm sitting there with like a big smile on the, my, on my face, like I know exactly where this is going, and I want to <laughs> tell you, but I just want to show you instead. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, man, that that game is a lot. It's emotional. There's all sorts of stuff happening in in that yang 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 game that really make you think and wonder if you made the right choices. Um. Like. Bravo to all the 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 team that that worked on that game to make all the extra stuff like the extra small stuff that you can just pick up and look at and hear some extra bit of info on because you can play the entire game without that stuff and be fine mm-hmm. but they gave you so much extra inf- information that it really just fills out the world. And it fills out these characters in a way that makes you think like, ooh, like I I was really hating on them in the first half of this game. Should I not have been? Or are they still dicks? Like, hmm. I, I don't know, man. So it's good. It's fun. I, um, yeah, it's 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 a tough one. My my partner was like, I didn't I didn't know it would come down to this. It would come down to this decision. I this was too hard. I was like, well, uh, yeah, I was in the same spot you were. <laughs> oh, it's good. It, it, it's it's yeah. it's a fun game to play. Mm. Yeah, sounds great. Maybe one day I'll play it. You should. It's good. Yeah. I, I think. Um, not that it's the best version of the game, but I think you can also get it, get it on your iPhone. Like there's an there's an iOS version, so it's out there. I don't know. Maybe one day. Easy to play. Did 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 you play Life is Strange two? No, haven't played any. Man, even better. In in certain ways, I I I still have so much nostalgia for the characters in Life is Strange one. But they just they they learned so much from like here's here's how you do things to make the characters feel like they're real or feel like you're supporting them and then making you feel like ooh did I screw that up I don't know uh and yeah just adding on a whole nother layer of of it's not only your actions and your decisions but you're kind of impacting another p- player in that second one so you might pick one thing but they might not want to do that so you have to go do something else that you might not like so mm-hmm. and it's cool fun yeah 
Uh, let's dive into a little bit of housekeeping, and then we will finally get into the news for the week uh, and start talking about uh, this jam-packed week for video game news. Uh, if you did not know, ladies and gentlemen, you guys can find more information about all of our podcasts at our website, thewhatnots.com. Uh, we have multiple podcasts for you to check out. We've already mentioned that Ignacio will be uh, on in episode of the review show coming up this month uh we also mentioned the reactor core uh wh where we will be doing our birds of prey spoiler cast um and ignacio you were also on a patreon exclusive episode of the captain's log yeah um, we did a quote-unquote draft yeah it was a sort of movie draft where we picked five different m movies uh that have nothing to do with one another uh and that was all to make our own cinematic universe mm -hmm. that was fun that was good um so yeah if you guys like what we do patreon.com slash the whatnots is where you can support us for as li little as a dollar a month uh that'll get you episodes early that'll get you access to the live streams of the review show, all of that stuff. Uh, at the $3 tier, we have exclusive content. That's where you can he hear that one uh, exclusive show that we just mentioned. And we also want to give a big shout out to our Patreon supporters at the $5 tier. Uh, so once again, thank you, Sam. And thank you, Christine. We love and appreciate both of you. Thanks for helping us out. Thank you for helping us out. Exactly. Um, cool. House has been kept. Yep. Let's move on to the news of the week. We got six things to talk about this week. Start off uh, with a big one. Number one yeah. on our list, Dan Hauser leaves Rockstar. Uh, this is coming from Colin Campbell over at Polygon, who writes, Dan H H Hauser, vice president, president of creative at rockstar G -G 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 games is set to depart the company next month uh the announcement was made by parent company take two interactive on tuesday afternoon and the statement that they they re 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 released reads as this after an extended break be beginning in spring of 2019 dan H hauser vice president creative at rockstar G games will be leaving the company dan hauser's last day will be march 11th 2020 we are extremely grateful for his contributions rockstar G games has built some of the most critically acclaimed and commercially successful game worlds a global community of passionate fans and an incredibly talented team which remains focused on current and future projects. Ignacio. Yeah. What do you think about this? I mean, it's like big news to see one of the Hauser brothers leave Rockstar. Yeah. I mean, they are the Hauser brothers. And now there's just one that's in Rockstar. I mean, the if you Hauser see... now. Just one. <laughs> yeah, one, one Hauser brother. <laughs> yeah, but if you see the amount of games that Dan Hauser has been involved in... It's, it has been pretty much all of, all of Rockstar's catalog. Yeah. I think he started maybe writing on the second GTA, but after that, he has been involved in every other uh, Rockstar game. Pretty all the much, GTAs, yeah. Bully, even up to Red Dead Redemption 2. So it's pretty big that one of the Hauser brothers is leaving. And I wonder how will this impact the what we assume can has to be long development GTA six. I wonder how it will affect us. You yeah. have to imagine Dan Hauser was also one of the writers in that game. Yeah, or mm -hmm. at, at, at least uh, shaping someone else to be like, "Hey, you, you are my ward. You, <laughs> you will be the next. Take my place." Yeah. Who knows? Um, yeah, I mean. I, how, uh, I'm looking up his credits on Wikipedia here. He was a producer and a writer on Grand Theft 
Auto London, 1969. Yeah, I believe that's the first one. Oh, That's their first game. Huh. But after that, he has been one of the writers on <clears throat> at least most every other Rockstar game. I mean, Pretty if much, you, yeah. He hasn't been all, the only writer on all those games. It has always been Dan Hauser and someone else. And even in Red Dead Redemption 2, it was several other people also writing. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, we don't actually know much about what goes on inside Rockstar games. Right. They are always so secretive and not very public speaking. The Hauser brothers never give interviews. They rarely ever do. So yeah. it's hard to say if it will be actually very impactful on the development of whatever game they have on on development right now. But still, it is pretty big to see one of one of the most influential, or at least one of the top people on one of the biggest companies on video games live. Right. I know a lot of people were kind of just chalking this up to, hey, I, I think this is just his time. Like he, like he's done a lot of stuff. Uh, Red Dead Redemption Two was the last thing he worked on. He took a big sabbatical after that. Yeah, sounds like he was one of the people that was on the team that was working those one hundred hour weeks. So I'm sure that yeah. took a lot out of him. We mm -hmm. also know that they're rolling in money thanks to oh, Grand Theft sure. Auto V. Yeah. Um, so I like it very well could be that he's just like, you know what? I've I've made some great stuff and I'm just I just want to live my life. I'm going to go retire mm -hmm. and relax. Um, yeah. It very well could be that. I also wonder if this is potentially health related. I have mm. I'm. Basing that on absolutely nothing, that's yeah. just a hunch. But he, like, he's been on this sabbatical. They knew that he yeah. was going to take a break and then come back. And then he comes back to this. Yeah, it just well, struck me as odd. Yeah, I, I wonder if the sabbatical had anything... Well, if it did have anything to do with him leaving or if he actually planned on leaving and instead knows, just... Yeah. Took a sabbatical and then thought it all, and then eventually did decide that yes, he will leave. But he yes, had to, yeah. So Rockstar started on 1998, and he started with it. He was one of the co-founders. He was, yeah. So being 22 years in a company, you have to have been pretty much nonstop. It must take a toll on you, especially oh, yeah. if for sure. As we know, he was one of the people working all those hundred-hour shifts. Well, yeah, yeah. We, we 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 assume. Uh, no, it, it makes uh, sense that he would be. Um, yeah, I mean, we know he was one of those people because after the comments came out, they actually had to come out and say, "No, it was just us top people working on the game." Gotcha. That's true. So I, yeah, I, re I remember, remember. I remember that now. Yeah. So um, I, I'm guessing that this means he's out of the in industry. Yeah. And I I, yeah. I I I think especially with that sabbatical right before this, it is one of the cases that he is probably out for good. Uh, yeah. and he's just he's just gonna go relax and enjoy life. Mm -hmm. And he's forty six years and I don't yeah, see any then he's forty six. I dude, I wish I could retire. At, at that, I mean, I wish I could retire now, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like, I would love to be that rich where I can like retire early and just not have to worry. Ugh, that yeah. would be that would be the life. Yeah, man, he must be so rich. And be the life. Hopefully, yeah. crossplay one day will be rolling in dough. Yeah, right. Hopefully, hopefully. you hopefully. listener out there can help us get. There. Exactly. The Patreon.com slash the whatnot. Patreon.com. <laughs> or go to a store. Tour yeah. store. Buy some merch. The whatnots.com yeah. slash store. Yep. Uh okay. Moving on. Number two. Phil Spencer sees Google and I Amazon as their competition. 
This is coming from Hayden Taylor over at gamesindustry.biz. They wrote, uh, speaking with newly launched tech publication Protocol, Spencer said the company's Japanese counterparts lack the means to compete with its high-end cloud infrastructure. Quote, when you talk about Nintendo and Sony, we have a ton of respect for them, but we see Amazon and Google as the main competitors going forward, he said. That's not, that, that, that's not to disrespect Nintendo and Sony, but the traditional gaming companies are somewhat out of position. I guess they could try to recreate Azure, uh, but we've invested tens of billions of dollars in in the cloud over the years. End quote. Okay. Microsoft. I mean, he's he's kind of speaking for Microsoft, not just Xbox at at that moment. I I feel yeah, like I mean, right, but it is Phil Spencer, and we know he's trying to talk about Xbox in specific. I mean, he has a point that, may, yes, yes. Sony and Nintendo doesn't don't have much on the cloud streaming part, mm-hmm. but I mean Xbox is a is first and foremost a video game company, and right now Sony and Nintendo are their competition, and right now they are on third place. So well, yeah, I mean it's very easy to say now that they are not your competition when you are last. I don't necessarily disagree with you but i mm-hmm. i think what he's trying to get at is he's i mean it, it's been most of what xbox has been doing for the past couple years now where they've yeah. been positioning themselves uh for the future right i, I mm-hmm. think the future of video gig gig games is going to be streaming is going to be this cloud stuff might start happening a little more this next year, but we're not going to say it really take over completely for some time. Yeah. And so in that sense, if that's what Microsoft is wanting to position Xbox, X, X, Xbox. X, X, Xbox, goodness gracious, I cannot speak. Um, I, I think that's what they're trying to pos- position Xbox to do is like, mm. Hey, when it really comes down to it, it's Google and Amazon that have the power to do this. They've they've put themselves on the court. Now, mm-hmm. who's to say that Stadia will compare or will yeah. you know still be around in five years? But mm-hmm. he's he's right in that sense. Like in that ball game. Sony and, Nint- and Nintendo aren't really there. Yep. They're probably making some moves. We know that Sony struck a deal with Microsoft uh, to be a- a- able to use some of their cloud services or something yep. like that. Um, so, yeah, like I-, I think Microsoft is ahead of the ball game in that sense. They are forward thinking. But yeah. that I mean, being said, true. to like yeah. ev- the everyday person out there, it's still going to be the console wars. It's still just going to be like, who won? Was it, was it Xbox or PlayStation or Nintendo? Yeah, I don't know. You, you're right. No way. I Lately, I haven't been understanding much of Microsoft's decisions with regards on Xbox. Mm-hmm. They don't make sense to me, but... I don't know. Maybe it does make sense to them. And yeah, maybe they're right. Maybe in some years, yes, Amazon and Google will be their competition. But yeah. right now, we're not there. And Nintendo yeah. and Sony are still their competition. And also, I wouldn't count Sony out of it. Sony mm-hmm. does have its own streaming service, it has PlayStation Now. And. For as much as people don't talk about PS Now, I actually got to try it out uh, some weeks ago, and I do think the service works well. Works fine. So, yeah, yeah it works fine. 
I played a couple of PS3 games. I did some tests and it ran fine for me. Didn't have much problems. Was, so was that Sony, when you were here in the US or was that when you were still back in... No, here. In, <laughs> no, PS Now doesn't exist over there. Gotcha. So when I got here, I got to try it out finally. And yeah, like it's, I said, it streams well. It does work. Do you, I don't know why more people don't talk about it. Do you happen to know what uh, your I I I internet speeds are where you're at uh, right now? They aren't pretty... Uh, they aren't great. They aren't bad, but they aren't, it isn't great. I would say gotcha. maybe around 15 mix. I thought it was what I... 15 or 50? No, 15. 15. I believe okay. that's what I test when I, when I tested it, when I tried it out. Um, and run well. Yeah, because I, I would say like between 15 and like 30 is maybe what like the average person in America mm -hmm. has. But in in locations like San Francisco or where I live here in Richmond, like uh, internet speeds are a lot better than that typically or they're mm -hmm. available right mm -hmm. um so it, it, like it, it it also still kind of depends on where you are yeah so. but it will it will also be the same for microsoft when they unveil their own cloud streaming service yep so right now i wouldn't count sony out if sony would decide to put more effort into ps now and try to make it a thing and and maybe advertise it better right it could be a competitor yeah i i'm expecting them to drop some bombs i think when mm -hmm. they announce the ps5 and all of that stuff uh I, I well not that like everything is is gonna be perfect but i i i feel like they are going to try and make some moves at least to hold their position if that yeah. makes sense like hey, yeah, well, we we had your hearts and mm -hmm. minds this 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 year. Let's keep it that way. Yeah. Well, like like we said, Sony struck a deal with Microsoft in order to, in order to work on Azure or with Great. Azure, and Sony, let's not forget, also has its own company that does streaming, Kaikai. Kai. I know, yeah, which is no one they, ever talks about it, but Sony still has it. Yeah, I mean they. They presumably put them to to work on PS now, and that's yeah, that, why that's, it's that was they, what they did. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Sony, let's move on yep. to number three here, uh, which says so Sony has not determined a price for the PS Five yet. Uh, this is coming from Eddie McC McC McCutch at Gamespot, uh, and they write. What will the PS5 cost? Sony management responded to that question during an earnings call, saying those details might depend on other factors, including the competition. This is presumably a reference to the Xbox Series X, which also doesn't have a price point yet. Quote, uh, which is not very clear or visible is, I don't know. Oh, that's weird. Did I skip a weird thing? Let me see. <laughs> Let me open this. Copied two different pair of graphs to make sure. Got some stuff. I think I just might have missed something. No, I guess not. Oh, I guess I just read it wrong. Okay, let's start this again. Quote, what is not v very clear or visible is because we are competing in is because we are competing in the space. CFO Hiroki Totoki said through a translator. Uh, so it is very difficult to discuss anything about the per, uh, about the price at this time. Depending upon the price level, we may have to determine the promotion that we are 
going to deploy and how much cost we are prepared to pay. So it is a question of balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. I think this makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, there's, I don't think there's too much to say on on this that they kind of want to put their feelers out there, right? Yeah, they have a next gen box with some amazing technology in, mm-hmm. inside. It's going to be co- costly. Like this is yeah. not going to be a cheap thing. Um, but where exactly they price it kind of depends on what xbox is doing as well the one thing that i thought was interesting is they they mention um that we may have to determine the promotion we are going to deploy Mm -hmm. so i i I think it's more than just what the price is or hey we're gonna drop it by one hundred dollars. I don't think it's gonna be just something like that. They might bundle it with something, mm. um, yeah. which would be an interesting thing. Of of like, hey, here's the PlayStation Five, um, and here's I don't know, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn with a four K update and something, so that you can play Horizon Zero Dawn two in two months or three yeah. months who, who knows like they might have some package like here's the ps5 with spider-man and god of whoa or play these things um which i mean a lot, a, lot, a lot of people already have those ones so i don't know if they're gonna be like here's all of them or or or, or what because we still don't know about many of the launch games so they might have something yeah. up their sleeve who knows? Yeah, I don't know. This, like you said, it does make sense. Sony right now doesn't need to make the first move. They have still plenty of time to watch and see what Microsoft does and how mm-hmm. it prices its own console. And I do see, do see them them pricing their own console, factoring in what the other console costs, what the Series X costs. I can see them, maybe if the Series X comes out at 500, I do see them seeing the option of pricing it at 400, or maybe if it is more expensive, the Series X, they could go and up the price on their own console. So yeah, it does make sense for them to not want Mm -hmm. to reveal anything right now and be kind of reactionary towards what Microsoft does. They yeah. don't need to rush right now. They, they're they're seem... at the top spot, that's for sure. Yeah, they'll for sure price it as high as they need and as low as they need. Yeah, not higher, I, not lower. I think what's interesting as well is that uh, Xbox seems to be going in the in the in the direction that they might have two boxes. At, at yes. launch, they have their like uh, high end one, and then their like lower end one, which yeah. is an interesting move. Yeah, um, it is interesting. I wonder how it will impact the sale of their own console, because we also have to imagine that come November or December, if Microsoft does indeed release two SKUs of consoles, we will mm-hmm. not only have three next gen consoles selling at the same time, but also four previous gen, gen, gen consoles selling at the same time. Yeah. So I don't know what's interesting about how Microsoft will price their own consoles is that they have to consider how much the higher end console will cost, how much the lower end console will cost, and how much lower it will be from the higher end. And also if they how farther away they will be from the Siri, the xbox one x and the xbox one s right so they will have to balance four consoles on their pricing they seem to be going the route of like like modern day phone plans or Mm. or or something where uh new software will come to these phones like hey you need to update these phones once a year to get the new operating system and and stuff like that and it looks like 
Xbox is taking a similar approach in the sense that it sounds like their games are going to work on multiple consoles. Yeah, on like we know that the Series X, whatever this cheaper one is going to be, it sounds like it's still gonna work on uh, mm-hmm. the the Xbox One X. Um, yeah. it, they they might even work on the S. Who knows? Yeah, I believe it will. And that's uh, what one of the things that, that confuses me right now about Microsoft's own strategy. Because yeah. you have to think that in the event that they do release two SKUs of next gen, we know that for at least two years, those same games will run on the one. Mm-hmm. So if you are a new new consumer and you see the higher end Xbox series, whatever, you would think, hey, why will I pay this much if I can play it just on an X, yeah, or just get an S, which is much cheaper. Yeah, true. And and also as a consumer, if I know that this high rank console, these games will also run on an older console, I have to think as a consumer, hey, is it really that much better if I can still play these games on an older console? Is it really that? that big of a jump where if, whereas if i'm looking at the ps5 i know that it will be a bigger jump at least as a, as a consumer it would be perceived as a bigger jump if i know that hey these games can't be played on the last gen so they must be a lot better or look a lot better yeah so it is interesting and i wonder how it will play in the end for Microsoft if it really is a good strategy or not. That's why I say I don't really understand what Microsoft is doing right now Yeah, the, with the their own consoles. thing that confuses me with that is third-party games. Mm-hmm. Like, in, in, in internally, uh, the Xbox, like, first-party studios, they could potentially make their giggy games to be a little bit more modular in the sense that maybe they design them for the, like, top one so if, mm-hmm. if you want you know the high end experience you're gonna want to play them on the xbox series x but yep. uh, you know for lack of better terms they can just kind of flip some switches off and it kind of downgrades the experience mm-hmm. so that it works on okay if you still have an xbox whoa one x and you haven't up yet or if you still have an s it still works. Yeah. You know, you but can I, still play the game, but it's just not, you know, it's not the 4K Ultra Edition. <laughs> yeah, but at, at some point it will, the fact that those games will also play on older consoles, it will drag the games back. If yeah. you look back at the beginning of this generation, the jump wasn't that great if you... If you looked at games that came out on the previous gen and this gen. It mm-hmm. wasn't until we let go of the last gen that games actually could do more stuff. Yeah. So at some point, if you promise your games will also be able to be played on last gen consoles, you will start to drag down the games. It would be a, a constraint on those games. I'm wondering how quickly they will kind of phase out the one S. Uh if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not making this up, I'm pretty I believe they said two years. For at least okay. two years you will still be able to play games on the last gen. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, well best we'll of luck see. to Microsoft and Xbox. We'll see what's happening yeah. by the end of this year. We'll yeah, some hopefully stuff their strategy does work. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still sold on an Xbox. Like, I I want to get an uh, an Xbox Series X, um, and I want to get a PlayStation Five. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of waiting to see what their launch games are, because I'm not 100 percent sold yet. But say oh, the cool. Series X comes out at 500 dollars, and would you be in inclined to buy it knowing that you could play those same games on a on an Xbox One S 
as it will probably go down in price when the new For air me consoles personally, come out? personally, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's only because I very recently got a 4K TV. I don't have any kind of 4K co- console. Uh, I only have a- the one S can play 4K. Sure. Um, yeah. But I also only have a base PS4. Mm-hmm. And knowing what the games play like on that, I, I'm tired of that experience. Like I'm start, I'm okay. I'm tired of things chugging and all the pop pop in texture and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And then I, I think something like the Series X will make that a lot better. So I yeah. I'm also not a PC g- gamer, so I don't mm-hmm. have that like high end. Yeah, you're not a dork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a dork as I sit no. here talking about video games uh. yeah i mean you do have a point but i think for the common person for the layman it will come down to what which is a cheaper option yeah why pay 500 dollars if i can play the exact same games on a 200 to 50 dollar console it's a fair especially point. If, if that i don't think the common person really cares that much about how games look it's a, it's a fair point. I think mm-hmm. maybe the only counterpoint that I can think of right now is like, well, sure, you can get the 1S now, but in two years, you're just going to have to get something else. Whereas if you get the X now, if you invest that extra m- 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 money now into an X, you're probably going to be good for you know at least five years. Well, then I get an X in two years. Why buy it now? It will, like I'm 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 saying if 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 you don't like like if if your option right now is to get the Xbox One S their mm-hmm. like lowest mo- 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 model or you or the their like high end one I st- I would st- like would still have to b- buy something again down the road mm. whereas if I get the Series X I'm good to go for a longer time. Because they're going to be phasing out that lower model. Mm, I don't so know. You, you I have, would... It's 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 like the the circle in like Fortnite and battle royale games. With mm-hmm. the one S, you're a lot closer to the circle, and it's 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 coming mm. down the road. So yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. There's so many indeed. things that we can account for, and only time will tell. Number four, the wonderful mm-hmm. 101 remaster has a pretty successful Kickstarter. Yeah, <laughs> who would have thought? Who would have thought? Uh, this is coming from Eric Kane at Forbes, and they write, The wonderful 101 remastered Kickstarter raised over $1 million in its first 12 hours. The goal was just under 50000 Um, That number has now climbed to just over $1.4 million as of a couple days ago uh, and has 21,600 backers have contributed to this goal goal and there are still 29 days to go in the campaign that's a little bit of a lower number now i think it's what 26 or so days left but still where was the number before uh it was at see the number has now climbed to just uh, uh, over 1.4 million uh and that was so i'm looking at it right now and it's 1.529 Million. There you go. We two twenty third thousand buggers. Twenty three thousand five hundred ninety eight. And twenty five more days to go. Have Have you played this game, the wonderful one hundred and one? No. I, I I've, I've never, never even heard of this you. game. To be honest. Wait, you, you didn't? <laughs> no. <laughs> They're all I mean, like, makes... "Oh man, wonderful 101! What great times!" And I'm just sitting there like, "I, I don't, I don't know what anyone is talking about." Yeah, I mean, I mean it makes it makes sense because no one talks about it. it so, so the wonderful 101, the wonderful 101, 
was a game I remember them promoting for the release of the Wii U. This this okay. was one of the games they were showing off. No and so since it was Wii a Wii U, it was a Wii U and the Wii U was pretty much a failure. Right. No many people not many people played it. So and it was forgotten for through four times, uh, apparently. Let's see. The Wonderful 101 is an action-adventure game developed by Platinum and published by Nintendo for the Wii U. Yeah. Uh, the game was directed by Hideki Kamiya and produced by uh, At- Ats- Atsushi Inaba. They also worked together on The Beautiful Joe and Okami. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, Gameplay. so like I said, it was one of the games they were promoting the Wii U with. So I do remember them showing it off. But I... Like I said, I'd never played it because I didn't own a Wii U. Yeah. So, so the, the one thing I saw in this Forbes ar- 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 article uh, mm-hmm. is that it was one of the games that made use of the that, like, two-screen experience yeah. with the Wii U. From so, what I, s- I saw on a video about the development of the game, apparently you did stuff by tracing lines on the on the pad interesting so it, yeah it's, because of has that it's like an isometric view po- 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 point yeah. in the thing so i guess you would like drag where you want your character to go no so I'm from what i've seen the wonderful here, 101 so. the game is the main mechanic is that you actually control like Maybe it is indeed a hundred characters or okay. smaller characters. So what it is about is that you use them together in order to to fight. So if I'm not mistaken, you would actually trace on the gamepad in order to create stuff with uh, all of those characters to form something, say okay. a sword or a hand or whatever. Okay. All those characters would would work in conjunction on the game. Kind of reminds me of like the Green Lantern constructs. He's just like mm, I, I want to yeah, imagine a sure. fist, and then you draw a fist, and it, it, it's, yeah. it's a fist. Yeah. Interesting. So, I believe that that's what the game is about. So, like you said, it it was an isometric view. So I wonder how they will translate that. For the Switch on the PS4. Jeez, how would... Well, I guess well, technically the PS4 has that, like, the, touchpad. Yeah, it has a touchpad. Kind of do um, that. The, I know we has... The I mean, the, uh, the Switch has touch uh, controls, but... Yeah, it is a touch gonna, screen. Are they going to, like, I don't know. give you a portion of the screen to, like... This is where you draw your stuff. Yeah, or, or maybe they do away with the different view and just have you draw on top of what you're seeing already. But or, I, yeah, who, who knows? I wonder it might how just they will do button, it for the button for when it's docked when it's on the TV. Interesting. Yeah, maybe they'll go. have you draw with the with the Joy Cons. Um, that's good though. I I also saw in this article that uh this is them kind of trying to be a little bit more independent this is platinum kind of wanting to uh be be, be a little more independent and publish their own games because this was originally a nintendo published yeah game and i guess it's kind of falling in that space where it's like it really wasn't popular enough for nintendo to invest Mm -hmm. in a remake here but P- Platinum thinks that they have something, uh, and they they are like, "Hey, let's just let's try it on something like this. Can can yeah. we do a Kickstarter? It, will that help us out?" And ap- apparently, it's it's worked pretty well. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, from what I've heard, is that Platinum went to Nintendo asking for them to make a remake of Wonderful 101. And okay. Nintendo apparently didn't oppose, but it also didn't support them with them bringing the game towards our our other consoles, gotcha. like the PS4. 
So that's why they decided to do the Kickstarter. But apparently, the goal to bring it to Switch wasn't that high. So maybe Nintendo might have some involvement on the Switch port at least, since they didn't ask much money for the Switch version. Okay. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I find it interesting that it made that much money in so little time, especially yeah. since it isn't really a, a game that's very known, like you already demonstrated. Yeah, I have no idea what this gigi game is. <laughs> yeah. So it is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of remakes and stuff, let's move on to number yep. five here, which is Warcraft 3 Reforged has a hell of a lot of problems. Uh, mm -hmm. This is coming from Andy Chalk at PC Gamer. It says, The launch of Warcraft 3 Reforged in January was and continues to be a surprisingly ugly affair. It's one of the most beloved RTS games of all time, which is real-time strategy if you are one of the uninitiated. Uh, yet the release of its long-awaited remastered edition has inspired widespread outrage over everything from cut content to an E-U-L-A, I actually don't know what that one means, that plays oh, exclusive user claim. License agreement. What was that? And user license agreement. There you that's go. One that of would the be things, that. That makes sense. One of the okay. things they make you accept when you start a game. To an EULA that lays exclusive claim to any and all mods and other content that you may create for the game. The situation is bad enough that Blizzard is now foregoing its usual refund policy limits and offering refunds upon request to any Warcraft 3 reforged owner uh, who, who wants one. And during Activision's Q4 investors call today, per Blizzard President J. Allen Brack acknowledged that it's been a rough ride, but also said that Blizzard isn't finished with it yet. Jeez. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not a big fuck. Warcraft player, but I have heard, like, this is one of the big stories of the week of just like, oh yeah. my god, have you seen how bad this is? Yeah, I this also are, are into Warcraft, but I that's why I put it in, because it was big news. Yeah. And yeah. This is everyone <laughs> talking. Um, yeah. And I, I, I know... A lot of times, developers will release a game, and sure, there's still some jankiness, and there's some things yep. that's like, okay, it has some texture pop in, or that feature is coming in two months. And I know that's not always a popular move, but I, 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 I think this one is so, so like feature incomplete of mm -hmm. what they promised that. That's why it's making so much headlines. Yeah, like so... To, to get a Bethesda game that has a little bit of junk and j j j j j jank it's like, all right, well, I understand it. It's not what I would like. Please fix this. Yep. But this is just like, guys, you promised something entirely different. And we yeah, just got so... the bare bones here with so apparently... things taken out. Some of the problems are that, yes, there are some things that Blizzard promised that aren't in the game. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, apparently, from what I've heard, it is a worse version of Warcraft 3. And it doesn't exactly. help that Activision or Blizzard took out the region of Warcraft 3. So you can actually play it. You can go back to Warcraft 3. This is the version that is that exists right now. So, yeah, and it also doesn't help that Blizzard has been with a lot of controversy lately. Yeah. I I think it was the Giant Bomb cast or the Giant Beast cast. I don't remember which one, but they were talking about this. And uh, they were saying, yeah, that they were also promising, like, brand new cutscenes. 
mm-hmm. to to like redo some of the cinematics and stuff uh yeah. and that didn't happen yeah apparently so it's it's the, just the use of the same cinematics it's the same baffling old cinematics i think what yeah. gets me the most is that at the end here of what i i put down in the document it says that j allen barack acknowledged that it's been a rough ride but also said that blizzard isn't finished with it yet like i like that's the thing that i'm wrestling with and i'm just like well if it's not finished Mm -hmm. why would you put it out like they, why? Yeah, why wouldn't you just say, it, yeah. like, "Hey guys, this needs to be delayed." Yeah. Like, it, it, like, like, like you alluded to, to, Blizzard has had a lot on their plate right now, especially in the crisis department. Right? They, yep. they, they have, they've had to deal with so much. Who in their right mind thought that putting this out there would be a good thing? mm Hmm. I, yeah. I, I have no idea. I just, I mean, look, I'm not a game developer. I know that game developing is incredibly difficult. Sometimes you have to make compromises. I get that. I just, I don't, there's certain things that companies do that I just don't understand. Yeah. Makes no I sense. I don't know what, what to say. Makes no Lizard sense. Fucked up. They sure did. Uh, well, hopefully that game gets fixed and gets up to par very soon. Mm. Hopefully they can have some some hopefully people working on that right away. Let's yep. move on to number six, which is our final story of the show. It says PS4 remote play on Switch? Question mark? This, yeah, this is coming from Sammy Baker at Push Square. And they write... Sony is doing some research into PlayStation 4's popular remote play feature, potentially teasing some tantalizing new ways to play. As part of a survey shared on Reddit, the manufacturer asks whether respondents would be interested in streaming their games to other devices like Nintendo Switch or Apple TV. It also asks whether users would be enticed by an offline version of remote play, though it doesn't elaborate on how this would actually work. Yeah, <laughs> how would that work? I Well, I I kind of take that to be a, like, hey, do you want to download the game for like a short amount of time? Or, yeah, but or, that or point or it isn't remote play. I mean, yeah, it, it's not yeah. a remote play. Maybe, maybe somehow they kind of incorporate that to... Like a cloud save yeah, system. Maybe PS Now. Works. And so yeah, if if you like play it on the go, you can sync your save to mm. something else. Who knows? Yeah. But yeah, like you said, this came from a survey. And yeah, we shouldn't actually look too much into it as right. Sony has been known to put some some things on surveys that actually never come to be. Yeah, that's so, that's a pretty common thing for a lot of companies who who put out surveys like this. It's yeah, just so to, we shouldn't look too much into it. Yeah, it, it it's just to kind of put their feelers out and be like, okay, what what are people actually concerned about and wanting? Like, what is the experience fine? Is it not? Would you be interested in something like this? Yeah. Um, and so I know earlier on in the show we kind of commented on PlayStation doesn't really seem to be in the same ball game as Microsoft when it comes to like cloud g- g- gaming stuff. Mm-hmm. I think this is them still putting out f- <laughs> healers for yeah. stuff down down the road. Yeah, um, I mean for sure it would be interesting to see remote play on the Nintendo Switch, especially yeah. since it already exists on PC. I've been or, using or, yeah, that lately. Like, hey, hey, here's the bunch. PlayStation app that you can yeah. get on your Nintendo Switch or on your yeah. Apple TV. Yeah, and 
putting the remote play app on the Switch, I don't think it would be there would be any negative consequences for Sony. They would only be positive as you would still need your own PS4. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it would be maybe a good idea for Sony to put the That's remote true, play app yeah. on the Switch. It would be interesting to see if Nintendo actually approves it or not. See, but for Sony, I, was just I thinking, think it would be a good move. Yeah, I was just thinking more in general of of like, what if they did a PlayStation app that was just like, hey, we know you've paid for uh, God of War, uh, that's in your library, so you can stream it with this app right mm. you can play it that, that way that's what i was kind of thinking but 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 i think you're right where it is to do the remote play stuff you already have to have a playstation 4 yeah um which i i think would interest sony yeah. more than 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 just like hey here's the app that we made yeah putting remote play on the switch would be one thing. Another thing would be actually putting PlayStation stuff on mm -hmm. the Nintendo Switch. I don't think Sony would ever do that. And if they did it, as you said, with an app, I especially don't think Nintendo would ever let right. that happen. For the well, same reason, I, mean, I think they would never approve an, a Game Pass or xCloud app on the Switch. Is that it? would only benefit Microsoft in that case and not Nintendo. It would actually be the opposite, I think. True. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. uh, we know yeah, that. And again, I, I doubt it, anything will come from it. Right. As we said, Sony has put some stuff on the past on their service surveys and nothing has come out from it. Yeah, who knows? We'll see. We know that uh, N Nintendo and Microsoft have kind of been been getting cozy there down the road. So yeah, who knows? But I, I, who knows? I kind of, but I don't think they're at that point that anything big would come up from it. We will have to see. Mm -hmm. But that about does it for news for this week. Um. Ignacio, yeah. What are you looking forward to this week? Are are you just gonna keep chugging along in Kakarot and uh, yeah, Vader Immortal? Yeah, I I just got to pretty to the point right before the cell games on Dragon Ball Z ah. Kakarot, so I still have uh some a bunch to go through on the game. Okay. So I I don't expect by next week to have finished the game, or, since I have still pre plenty of it. Gotcha. And yeah, I'll also try to play Vader Immortal Episode Three by next week to cool. give my impressions on that one. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, I am looking to keep playing some Assassin's Creed Odyssey. However, mm -hmm. uh, I've also been really wanting to play final fantasy 7 i have the original one on my switch um mm -hmm. and i played like the opening scene i literally yeah. got to the first save spot and then was like all right save turn it off i need yeah. to go do something else um not because i did i did, 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 didn't like the game but because i was really tired when i was playing it i was just like i i don't want to fall asleep on this game so mm -hmm. So you don't do want to wait benefit. for the remake? I like I I kind of just want to be educated if that mm. makes sense. Um, yeah. Like I, I don't need to finish it per se before the the new one comes out, but I would like to play it and see, see, see what it's about. My my first Final Fantasy was 10. Mm. Uh, and I re really really love that one. But I haven't played any of them before that, so yeah, seven would be a good one. Eight would be a good one. Nine would be a good one. Six would be a good one. They're all good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
we'll see. It, yeah, it, no, no, when I, I had the same thought before. I also started at some point seven when it came to Switch, mm-hmm. but eventually I just stopped because I would rather wait for the remake. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think when I bought it, it was like seven dollars mm-hmm. on Switch. That was like at Christmas. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how far I get with that stuff, but I am excited to play all of that stuff. When? Did, let's see. What? A, I don't even know what's coming out the rest of this month. There's still not much un- not until for, like I, Animal Crossing and Doom. Well, for me, nothing is coming out of importance until April second for with Resident Evil. Okay, so you're not gonna play Animal Crossing or Doom? No, I doubt it. I'm, dude. I, I'm. I might try Doom, but I, I don't think. I'm nervous maybe. about Doom. Uh, I played the first one for like a free weekend. Mm-hmm. I played a d- d- demo, and I didn't like it. Yeah, I, same here. It was not the kind of shooter that I wanted. However, like hearing people talk about it, I, I, I have so much FOMO. Like I, <laughs> I just, I feel like I missed out on something and i just didn't understand it um yeah and i i I think it's kind of why i enjoyed the division 2 so much is i'm a single player gamer and i like the fact that i can hide behind cover and sit there and pick people off i love that Mm. you can't do that in doom like, you have to keep moving and just go from glory kill to glory kill and stuff like that. And that's just, that's not how I play first person shooters. Um, so it was yeah. a style that I, I'm, I'm not used to and I don't necessarily like. But I kind of want to dive into Doom Eternal. Yeah. But I feel like it's going to be the same thing. And I'm just like, I'm so nervous. I don't yeah. know. That's the exact same for me. I also tried it out on a free weekend, and it also didn't grab me the game. So that's why I'm, I'm still struggling on whether I will play Eternal or not. Because I've heard people talk about Eternal as it being this great game that it would yeah. be too great. So that's why I'm kind of struggling. From all the uh, impressions know. that came out this past week, uh, this yeah. past week or, or 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 two, it sounds like there's they've done a lot of things to kind of make it more accessible to Mm. people um so maybe something like that is the route for me just be like hey i'm no good at these games i admittedly suck at them let Mm. me uh turn on baby ass baby mode (laughs) have you played the newer wolfenstein games yes uh i I played yeah because I, i think those are maybe on a happy medium yeah, like I can do Wolfenstein. What was that? It was Wolfenstein Two? No. Uh, there was Wolfenstein New Colossus. Um, Not that one. The one that blood, uh, new came blood. out a couple new years order? ago. Order. Wolfenstein Whatever. the New Order. Um, I think it was. You, you you guys know the one that I'm 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 talking about, but uh, that one was fine. It was difficult, but. While I couldn't necessarily like sit there and hide behind cover, mm-hmm. I thought it was fine. I also didn't play it on the harder difficulties. Yeah. So, I, you know, I got through it. It was good. So, Wolfenstein The New Order was the kind of remake one, and then New Colossus was, was its sequel. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll I'm see. excited for all of that stuff. Ignacio, mm-hmm. yeah. where can the people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Ignacio Rojas B. That's I-G-N-A-C-I-O-R-O-J-S-B. That's my name and last names. And yeah, you can find me there. Cool. I am at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you guys want to stay up to date with us here at Crossplay or the other podcasts that we do here at The Whatnots, uh, we are on Twitter at The Whatnots. Go like, share, subscribe. Go do all of that stuff. 
I think as of right now, we are at 57 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, oh. So do you guys like what we do? Help us reach 60. Yeah. Uh, help us reach it and get past it so that that 60 stays. Because I'm, I'm sure mm. a couple of those a accounts are b b bots and stuff like yeah. that. So, <laughs> And also, you listening it out there, I bet you have some money, some spare money. Why don't yeah. you give it to us? Go to the Patreon. Patreon. Maybe Patreon. go to slash the whatnots. Yeah. Go to our store, which is the whatnots.com slash store. Yeah. Why not buy a t shirt or a phone case? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Help us out. Cool. Um, we will be back next week. This has been episode 14 of Crossplay. We will see you then. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for checking out our podcast. Uh, we hope you enjoyed that one as well. Uh, if you guys are looking for forward to something this next week in video games, let us know in the comments below. That would be super cool. What are you guys p playing? Uh, in the meantime, go subscribe to our show, which is up here in this corner. Uh, right there, you go hit that button. Do it that one and then go watch one of our other podcasts right down here uh if you guys are fans of comics we have some podcasts with all that stuff if you guys like anime we have that stuff we have all sorts of stuff for you guys to check out until next time though 